Namaste, everyone. My name is Greg Prescott from In5D.com. And this is my first official live video, I think. And uh, <laughs> let me know if anyone's out there watching. Uh, I, I'm over an hour late by the time I figured this out. Actually, what I ended up doing, I have an old computer, which is a um, Windows 7. And I think that's what I had to use, my Windows 10. I see people are here already. Yeah, I see uh, Andrea and Candice right there. Thank you, Stacy, Laura. Uh, thank you for joining me. And I want to thank everyone that's joining me also um, on the recorded version of this. So, yeah, wow, we got lots of people. Yay. And thank you all for being patient. Um, it's been a while. Um, I made probably every newbie mistake you could make on trying to get Facebook Live going. <laughs> but I finally got it going, and I figured out that it takes an older computer, obviously. What I ended up doing, though, as a last resort, I uploaded uh, Facebook Messenger onto my phone, my cell phone, and I was going to do that, and then <laughs> delete it afterwards. So, uh, well, thank you all for hanging in there, and... Uh, does the sound sound okay? Uh, let me know. <laughs> Stacy said, we thought you were at the beach. <laughs> well, Stacy, you're in Florida right now, and looking out the window, it's not really a good beach day, but that never stopped me before. <laughs> uh, hi from Key Largo. Uh, Josette Redwolf. Josette Redwolf? Uh, yay, wow, look at all you people that showed up. <laughs> I love you all. <laughs> you're amazing. Um, Ah, oh, thank you, Candice. Um, actually, I found that this Windows 7, the camera on this is kind of dark. It makes everything look really dark in here. So I'll just have to spread my light even more. So, so glad that you all could make it here. Um, what I'd like to start out by saying is just uh, telling a little about myself. Um, as many of you know, in 2008, I had what I call a galactic download after watching The Secret. And it's basically what led me to building in 5D. Um, I got, it was basically like a holographic kind of download where it told me what I had to do, um, I had to build this website, uh, even gave me the name in 5D. They told me that I had to do interviews and make myself a public figure, conferences and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, you got the wrong person, I'm an introvert. They said, no, you're the one. And <laughs> as, as difficult as it is for an introvert to do stuff like this, I know I have to do this. So here I am. And hi, everyone. I'm, seeing, I'm trying to pay attention here on the side. Um, there's so many people that showed up, and I'm so grateful. Thank you. Hi. Um, is it Tanina, Latita, Joy, Carrie, Eugenia, Laura. Wow. Hi, everyone. Um, very grateful you made it and had the patience to hang in there and <laughs> let me fumble through everything that I went through. Um, I had an Akashic Record reading a long time ago and I was told that, this is just another reason why I have to be out there in front of the public, I was told that there's certain codes that people get, whether it's from my facial recognition from various um, soul groups, soul, uh, soul families. Um, it might be voice recognition. There's something in my voice that does something for other people. So, um, And that was another reason why I was convinced for the first conference I had in 2013. I didn't want to put my name or my face on there. I just wanted to put all the guest speakers that we had on the promo. So uh, I really want to say hi to everyone over here too, but I have to continue this. Um, so I was told that I had to put my face and name out there, and I had to actually do some speaking for that first conference. Um, Helene, Bas Helene Lips and my co-host basically did all the introductions, and because uh, I was just, you know, too shy and being the introvert that I am, I was more comfortable <laughs> watching her do it. I kind of feel like that, you know, I'd much rather be like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain and putting everybody else out in front like uh, all, all of my amazing writers that I have. And I have too many uh, amazing writers that send me fantastic articles. And I would love to name all of them. I wish I had a list in front of me right now. And if I were to try to name all, I would miss somebody. And 
I don't want to do that either. So you all know who you are, and anyone that follows N5B knows who these writers are as well. So I just want to thank all of them from the bottom of my heart, and I'm just so grateful. And I enjoy putting their material out there because they write fantastic stuff. And not all articles get published that are sent to me by um, people. They, it has to go to a high standard of quality material for me to publish it on N5D. And if you have thought about writing, uh, just go to N5D. On the right-hand side of the page, if you're on a laptop, you'll see Attention Writers. And you can find out um, more about the process if you want to uh, submit an article to N5D, if you felt like writing about something. And I guarantee what will happen is that when you write an article and you put it out there and then check on the Facebook comments, whether it's on N5D or the N5D Facebook page, you'll find that so many other people are going through exactly what you're going through. And it's really cool. And you can start building a family that way. You, you'll find your tribe, basically. Excuse me for one minute. I've got a little flashing thing going on here. OK, I think I'm good. Yeah. OK, so yeah, so check, out, check that out if you were interested in writing an article for N5D. Um, like I said, they're all amazing, and I'm so grateful that you know they send me this amazing material. Um, now I'm going to try to pay attention here <laughs> to the side, and I'm going to take something from Rachel Kirkland. What she does, you know, if you have any questions, um, you can type them on the right hand side, and I'll try to catch them as they go by. But start it out with a question mark ask your question, and then end it in a question mark. That way I can tell that you're asking me a question and not talking amongst yourselves. And I hope that you guys are talking amongst yourselves as well, because this is all about family and building family. And I know that there are a lot of um, like-minded people that have, uh, that have joined me here. And I see a lot of introverts. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, one of my first, my, my first co-host on N5D Radio, uh, Heidi Cole, her and I did a a show on introverts and surprisingly nobody called in <laughs> I know there's like a bunch of introverts that were there probably dialing their the number and uh, as soon as it was time to go on cue they'd hang up and <laughs> so we didn't have one one person uh, call in for that introvert show not surprisingly yeah just what more Morgan uh, put in there the question mark beforehand uh, yes, I am in 5D. I, I am the official. <laughs> I started in 5D. I got the, down, the uh, download to build in 5D. was given the name in 5D. And uh, I attribute all of that, um, and I give all the credit to my daughter. Um, because if it wasn't for her, I, I honestly don't think in 5D would exist right now. Maybe it would, but it would have gone through a different avenue, and it might have taken longer to happen. But here we are. And uh, here you are, and I'm so grateful that you guys all made it here. So like I said, if you do have any uh, questions, start it out with a question mark and end in the question mark. But I, I see Andrea has a question. What's your version of what will happen soon? The thing is, I, I don't, I'm a visionary. I, I see things before they happen. And whether that's through uh, lucid visions, third eye visions or dreams, I see things before they're going to happen. Thing is, I never get dates. And I see that there's dates out there. As a matter of fact, was it Allison Cole? I made a video, or I, made, I created an article based around her, um, her QHHT uh, video about this big event that's going to happen soon. And it related to the three tidal waves of energy that I saw coming in. And there were actually tidal waves in my, in my dream, actual water. But as you know, that water is a mutable energy, so it can be solid, liquid, gas, whatever. And uh, these are three waves of energy that are coming. Now, in that dream, the first two converge. And then the last one is like a cleansing wave afterwards. And it's funny, because when I posted that video, so many people had this, these dreams about um, the, the tidal waves that were, were coming through. Um, and some would be just one tidal wave, 
but they weren't, uh, they, they weren't scared about it. There was nothing to fear when these waves come through. Um, but there was probably at, at least 10 people that um, told me that they had the same dream of three tidal waves going through. So this is something that we're all basically pulling from the aether or are writing this, the, the same collective dream or vision. So it's not just a coincidence when you have that many people that are talking about the same thing. So I know, I, boy, I wish I could backtrack here. Um, do you travel to other states to speak? I'm going to have to jot that one down. <laughs> But to finish on what Andrew was saying, uh, the visions um, or what's going to happen in the future. In, in short, I have no dates. I wish I did. Um, I just know that and feel that everything I've seen is going to happen as it's going to play out. I mean, everything I've seen, everything I've seen has either come to fruition or hasn't happened yet. It's crazy. And this all came to me, you know, basically after um, The Secret, after watching The Secret. Um, so I think what's happening now is that people are, you know, we're, we're getting our abilities now. And the more that you keep your vibration high and stay grounded, the more they're going to come to you. <laughs> so do I travel to other states to do speaking engagements? No, <laughs> I'm an introvert. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, what kind of things do you say or do? This is Eugenia to be in 5D prayers, mantra, techniques. Honestly, just go within. I think that's the most important thing is just be yourself, go within, and don't be afraid to be yourself around everyone. And this is me, 24-7. If I go back to New York and hang out with my buddies up there, they still get the same thing. So, um, if you have, like I said, I might have missed any questions. I think I'm, I'm caught up, but I'm not sure. If you have any questions, I'd be more than willing to talk about that. Now, getting back to um, Allison Coe, she said that there's a, a solar eclipse event coming on August 21st. And I can't really put a date. And it was kind of implied it was going to be on the August 21st uh, through one of her clients that was uh, doing a reading. And she said that this portal will be opening, allowing for a, a change on a mass change and a personal change. And it's an uh, advancement of human consciousness. And around the 17th, this client was told that she had to start intending for this energy to transform humanity. And when she asked when should she stop, she said never. <laughs> this is something that you got to just keep putting out. Now, a lot of you know that when I go to the beach, um, uh, Jamie Sundance is asking, what is the secret? It's a, it is a book, and it is a video. Um, I recommend both. It'll change your life forever. Um, but when I go to the beach, I do a walk of gratitude. It's the first thing I do when I go to the beach. So even when I'm at the beach, I'm still doing work. But it's not really work. Um, and what I do is I incorporate Ho'oponopono in there, which is basically, I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. Not in that order, necessarily, but. So the, actually, this is what I do, and I'll just go through it as if I'm right at the beach right now. Dear Creator, Source, Universe, Spirit Guides, Guardian Angels, Friends and Family on both sides of the veil, Galactic Neighbors and Friends, Higher Self, Mother Earth. I'm sorry if I don't say this as often as I should. Please forgive me. Thank you for your unconditional love, safety, support, protection, and abundance in everything that's good in life, as I promise to listen with open eyes, ears, mind, and heart. More than anything, I love you all. I'd like to ask that you help me turn on all the codons in my DNA, as well as activate all strands of DNA, present and future so I can heal myself and others and humanity's best interests. And then what I do is I ask them all to go on what I call a love bubble meditation walk. And I ask them to magnify their loving, healing energy from their heart center and extend it out as far as they can throughout the planet, galaxy, universe, multiverse, and omniverse. 
And then it's kind of, I kind of end it like a football huddle. I clap my hands together and I go, we're all family, instead of break or whatever you know, people say during a football game um, after they huddle. But the, the reason why I always say we're all family is that if you're walking down the beach and you see someone, say there's this grumpy looking guy, he's frowning and whatever. If you look at that person as family and think, hey, that's Uncle Carl. He always looks that way, but he's funny as hell. <laughs> you know, it gives you a different energy about that person. And you're able to give that energy back to people like that, even if they look miserable or <laughs> grumpy or whatever. You don't want to judge people anyway, but sometimes, you know, you just look at people and you're like, oh boy. Um, and I was getting that the other day. As a matter of fact, I posted a picture on Facebook um, of my umbrella. And this one guy that was staring at me, he always had this grumpy face on him. And every time he looked at me, I'd just smile. I need to look away. It's like my energy was too much for him. And, uh, or he was trying to intimidate me, try to bring me down to his level, and it didn't work. But it's funny that I ended up capturing him on film. <laughs> so that's on my Facebook page. Um, so yeah, that was one date that I've heard anyway, getting back to Allison Co. Um, of August 21st, 2017 for a solar eclipse. Now what she said is that there's also, and she, one of her clients in QHHT described these as waves that are going through. And she said the second wave will be on August 21st. Now this differs a little from what I saw in my dream where these, the first two waves converge, but if they're concentric rings, I'd imagine that they would converge at some point as well. So it's possible, but it wasn't really quite what I saw in my dream. So we'll see. I, you know, like I said, I can't put a date on anything. I've never been given dates for anything. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I can't believe there's 73 people here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. Um, so in a different session, um, Allison was told that the eclipse will bring, in her words, through her client, a tidal wave of energy. And... Uh, you know, once again, we're hearing these these terms that are being used. And when I put out that that first dream, uh, tidal wave dream last year, I don't recall anyone talking about that. And then all of a sudden, we're hearing tons of you know tidal wave um, scenarios that are coming in that are positive. It's nothing negative. There's nothing to fear when this happens. Landa, I see Landa here, my soul sister. I love you. Um, but yeah, we're hearing a lot about these waves. And according to Allison, the energy of each wave is the same. But when you magnify it, when the, you have one wave that goes over, it's almost like a coat of paint. You know, you put that coat of paint on and let it dry and then put another on. It just reinforces everything. It makes it even stronger and more depth to it. And she said that these waves carry the energy of unconditional love. Now. What I, I had this vision and I saw myself standing in front of myself from behind. And then in the blink of an eye, basically, this white light and the word I used initially was floods the planet. White light floods the planet. And the only thing you feel at that point is total unconditional love, more than you've ever felt before. Now, the thing I love most on this planet is my daughter, Brittany. And uh, as much as I love her, I'm underestimating the power of this, but I'm just putting a number to it, a million times stronger, and that's not enough. You can't describe this feeling of unconditional love that you'll feel when this white light hits the planet. And it, it could be a solar flash. It could be a energy coming from the galactic center. I don't know. I didn't get that. I didn't get a date. I just know the feeling of what it, what it feels like when that happens. And it's absolutely amazing. So I'm hoping that with what she's saying with this second wave of light, that unconditional love that's coming in, that might be the triggering mechanism. Now, what I was saying before about the walk of gratitude and the love bubble meditation, I highly encourage everyone to do this. Because when you call on your posse, now I've been told by three different psychics that I have the largest posse behind me of support that's going on behind me that they've ever seen. 
I, you know, how do I know? <laughs> but I trust them, and I feel them. I feel that I have all the support um, behind me through, you know, Creator, Source, Universe, Spirit, Guides, Guardian, Angels, right down the line. I call them my posse. And I think that everyone has a huge posse, a very, very, very large posse behind them. So I encourage you to do that, to do that walk of gratitude, to thank them, and to put it out there afterwards through a love bubble meditation to ask them to join you and send out that loving energy all throughout the planet, galaxy, universe, and multiverse, and omniverse. When you do that, it, it has this ripple effect. And I think it's going to help bring that event to us quicker, the more people that we can bring aboard doing this, especially when you have tens of thousands or millions of people backing you and your thoughts and magnifying that by putting it out there. So highly recommend that. You can, uh, you know, if, if you're curious about a little bit more about the Love Bubble Meditation or the Walk of Gratitude, I've written articles on both of those. So in the upper right-hand corner of M5D, just do a search for either one of those. And, you know, Love Bubble Meditation, Greg, or Walk of Gratitude, Greg, and you'll find it. And uh, the more people that we can bring aboard doing this, the more it's going to help everyone. So as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm trying to look over here on the right and see if there's anyone that um, has any questions that, about anything they want to talk about. I really don't have anything scheduled to talk about, but uh, I'm just grateful that I finally figured this thing out. <laughs> I'm able to actually have a Facebook Live event. Um, you know, a lot of people, I do post um, pictures on my personal Facebook page about going to the beach. I do go to the beach as often as I can. But um, I do a lot of work there, too, while I'm there. And I do a lot of grounding. Um, Siesta Key has 99.9% .9 quartz crystal sand. It's completely unique to any other beach in the world. It's currently rated number one in the United States and number five in the world by TripAdvisor. Um, so it's, you know, there's a reason why a lot of people want to go here. But every month I have, um, I do a fi in 5D meetup. And uh, our next meetup is on June 25th. And I always tell people to bring a chair, bring something cold to drink. And it goes from about 3 o'clock until 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, the last meetup we had close to 20 people there. And it was really cool. It's getting to the point where I might have to bring some kind of portable speaker because it's getting hard for people to hear everyone. But uh, it's, it's, it's something that people are digging. It's bringing uh, soul family, star family together. And uh, I'm really happy that people are attending this. Stacy has a question. Stacy LeClaire. Hi, Stacy. Love you. I'm so proud of you for doing the QHHT, by the way. And her question is, what is your method for astral travel or lucid dreaming? It's funny you mentioned that because... <clears throat> I was trying to do that. Matter of fact, when I was 12, I saw this advertisement in the back, in the back of a magazine for, it was a book on black magic, but they had one of the chapters in there was for astral travel, and that intrigued me. So I saved my money up, put $4 in cash in an envelope, sent it out in the summertime when my parents uh, were at work and I could get to the mailbox without them seeing it. And uh, eventually I got the book and I hid it, hid it in my closet and it always intrigued me about astral projection. But I never learned it when I was uh, 12 years old. I never got it down at that age. So flash forward to about maybe 10 years ago, I'm laying down, I'm like, like okay, today's the day I'm going to do it. I'm laying down and I, I'm in that relaxed alpha state and my body starts lifting out and I got about that far out of my body. And my cell phone rang. That's <laughs> you don't want your cell phone on. You want all distractions turned off. But to me, that was a message. Not that I'm not supposed to be doing that. That's not something. Just like lucid dreaming. Once you lucid dream, you lose that ability to really have the dreams come to you that should be coming to you. I, I don't think I'd get these visionary dreams that I do if I started lucid dreaming because I would be controlling those dreams instead of having these 
messages basically divinely sent to me. So I, I, I'm not a person that will do lucid dreaming, but I, I'm fascinated by the people that um, are able to do it and the stories that they're, they can tell. So if that sounds like something that interests you, Stacy, to astral travel or you know, lucid dream, I say go for it. See where it leads you and keep me posted on it because it sounds like fun, but I'm not supposed to be doing it myself. So, uh, Candace, see you at the drum circle in October, everyone. That's right. Uh, Candace and Michelle Walling are having an event in here in Sarasota in October. There's going to be a bunch of uh, cool speakers here for that on um, from QHHT, and I uh, highly suggest that you check that out. Candace, if you would put a link to the conference in the chat section. And hi to everyone that's joined the chat here. Um, getting back to what I was saying too about the um, the meetups that we have. Um, I, our next one is on June 25th on Siesta Key Beach, and then we have one on July 16th, August 21st, September 17th, and October 15th. That's as far out as I've gone <laughs> with giving dates. Um, <laughs> those are the only dates I can give. <laughs> I, can, I can give dates for meetups, but not for any of these visions I'm getting, unfortunately. Um, I'm always kind of leery of when you hear dates, too, because how many times have you heard these dates come and go? I, and I know that things happen. Timelines change every millisecond. Every time you think or have a thought, your timelines are changing. So, and it affects future timelines. Uh, Dolores Cannon was saying that when you wake up, if you were to choose a pair of yellow socks versus a pair of white socks, that creates its own parallel universe or alternate reality. Every choice and decision that you make changes, and every, one, every other one exists. So it's pretty mind-boggling when you put it all together like that. Um, once again, if you're joining us a little late, um, if you have a question for me, start out with a question mark, ask your question, and end with a question mark, and I'll be able to notice it there. And my earphone just popped out. So as I mentioned, and I've been talking a lot about this uh, recently um, on in 5 d Facebook, and uh, just the message I keep getting over and over and over and over again is to keep your vibration high and stay grounded to love forgive and express gratitude everything else is basically an, a, a distraction that's going on around us um, a lot of hot air and bullshit that's being pushed upon us and it means nothing it's crap utter crap stay grounded get out there in nature um, and I realize that, you know, in places like, you know, the Southern Hemisphere, it's your winter right now. Still, get out there and somehow, some way, um, find that way to ground. And uh, it's really, really important. I've seen so many people uh, in the spiritual world who are ungrounded um, lose it, mentally lose it. Um, several of them I had to remove everything from the N5D Facebook page, I will not back or support them. They've gone way too far, and I've had to, had to actually call out a couple people that were basically spamming my personal N5D Facebook page. Lily Earthling was one of them, and uh, she's just, she's got some lessons to learn, and I had to block her, and uh, so so be it. And I, like I said, I hate calling out anyone. I actually saved the conversation, and I highly recommend that you take the high road in every situation, even when someone's giving you crap like Lily was giving me. And uh, there's not one time I belittled her or said anything derogatory about her, but she kept slamming me back, and eventually I said enough was enough, and uh, I had to block her. So um, you're going to see that and probably experience that in your own lives where you see these people that are just basically having a rough time and it shows me that they're not grounded they're not doing their work and um, you can send them love and definitely ask you know, for, forgive them and forgive yourself 
And as I mentioned, that's one of the main things that I keep getting, um, you know, love, forgive, and express gratitude, along with you know, keeping the high vibration and staying grounded. And the forgiveness part is huge because Dolores Cannon mentioned you only have to do it once. That's it. You don't have to do it every day. You know, say, you know, if you had a bad experience with somebody, just forgive them that one time. You don't have to repeat it over and over and over and over again. You know, just that once. That's it. That's all you have to do. Um, so I have a couple questions here um, from Pervy Rathi. What do you say about those beginning to awake? And have to heal physically and feel zero energy. Um, well, once again, um, stay grounded as as much as you can. Um, and live in that vibration of being grounded, um, and and try to learn as much as you can. Listen to your heart and move forward. Don't necessarily listen to every, what everyone else is saying. Look inside for the answers because that's that's where all the answers are. And too often we're we're very influenced by other people. Um, and what they're thinking, but ultimately you already know the answers. Uh, Carl Streener has a question. We all hear voices in our heads. Uh oh, I lost it. It's going up. I can't find it. <laughs> I can't scroll up. Um, well, uh, oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> I lost it again. Boy, I'm having a hard time scrolling here. Anyway, about the voices. Um, I have premonitions of, of the future. Oops, I keep losing it again. Oh, gosh, there's so many questions that are coming here. I'm going to miss some, and I'm so sorry. Um, Gosh, I'm going to miss so many questions. Anyway, about the voices and um, premonitions and about the future. Boy, I could do a whole show on that. Um, when I was a child, I would go to sleep and uh, I'd hear voices. And they were like muffled voices in the room next to me. But it wasn't my parents or my sisters or anyone. It was just like muffled voices that I couldn't, or it wasn't the TV or anything. I just couldn't figure out who, who or what it was. <coughs> Sorry about that. But uh, after a while, um, probably 10, I don't know, 10-ish years ago, I was just about ready to fall asleep and the voices came in really loud and really clear as if they were standing right next to me. And it, it was like a layered voice. It's, you know, channeling is real, first of all. It was a layered voice. It was like a female and a male voice at the same time, talking in unison. So I kept a pen and a piece of paper by my bed and uh, so I could record all of my, uh, all my dreams. So I grabbed the pen and had the paper blow it and I started asking the, these beings questions. And as I was asking, as I was thinking about the question, they were already answering it. So it was working on telepathy, and it shows you how real it is, because I might start out thinking about a question, what is the, and they're already answering the question that I was going to answer, or to ask them. So anyone that's, that's done this, and has experienced what I've experienced, knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's all telepathic. You, you can't even ask the full question because they're already answering it. They already know what the question is. Um, so one of the questions I had for them was, how is this even possible for us to have this communication? Of course, I couldn't get that far into asking the question, but that's the question I wanted to ask. And they said that when you're about ready to fall asleep, your, your mind goes into the alpha state, which enables the possibility of communication on that kind of level. I also found out that they were from, I asked them where, where they're from, and they said they're from Zeta Reticuli. Now at the time I had no idea what Zeta Reticuli was. I thought they were bullshitting me. I thought they, I didn't even think it was a real place. Um, so I went on Google and I looked it up, and sure as hell, yeah, it was. Now nothing they ever told me 
was leading me in a bad direction. But I, just like what I was talking about, about astral projection, when I came out of my body and the phone rang, I just felt like this wasn't the avenue I'm supposed to be going either. You know, thank you for showing me that, that I have this ability and that I can channel, but no thank you. So I basically cut them off, and how I cut them off was I started playing like metaphysical videos at night. We'd kind of drown them out, and uh, you know, now I can just fall asleep, period, without even hearing the voice anymore. I kind of shut them, shut them off, so. And I have no interest, because I already have all the answers. You know, you do too. Everyone listening, everyone has all the answers within. You don't need to be channeling anyone. Now, a lot of people know that I don't believe in Jesus, okay? And there's a lot of people that do. But I'm concerned about the Jesuses that they're channeling. I have a friend of mine that was channeling the Mother Mary, and she's giving her all this great information, telling her all this stuff that hasn't happened yet and eventually happened. And then she said, go kill yourself. That's what a lot of these beings are doing. They're posing as, you know, Mother Mary, Jesus, Archangel Michael, and stuff like that. That's why, you know, I, I don't publish channeled, channeled material on in 5D because there's so much out there. There's these beings and archons that are posing as light workers that are misleading people. And like I said, you're, all the answers you have are in, within. So that's all you need to do. You know, it's always been my opinion anyway that all religious texts should be four words. Love everyone, respect everything. That's all you really need to know. That's it. And, you know, this world would be a better place for all of us. So, um, I, I, I wish I could scroll back. I know there's some questions here that I missed. And if you had some questions, please repost them because I know I missed a bunch. And I'm sorry. Here's one from Catherine Kite. What is your opinion of cosmic law contract of non-consent? I tested the waters of it, and I had a dra Draco come into my life. Did you have anyone, oops, I lost it, come to you in human form? Uh, hmm. In human form, like tangible? No. Um, through visions and stuff like that, yeah. Um, matter of fact, through a third eye meditation, um, a mirror meditation. I have this on in 5D where you look into a mirror, you, play, you shut off all the lights and place a candle in front of you. And you focus on your third eye. And what you're going to see is once you get into that meditative alpha state, you're going to see your face transform into all these different beings. And they could be aspects of yourself in previous lives. You're going to be um, male, female, and all sorts of different, you know, either gender. But while I was doing that, this monster ogre came in, just red, fiery eyes and fang-like teeth, and staring me in the eyes while I was doing that third eye meditation. And calmly I said, you're not welcome here, please leave. But what I should have said and done was send it love and helped transmute him. Of course, that could have been an aspect of myself as well. Who knows? So what would it hurt to send love to yourself? But, I, you know, and I don't recommend the third eye mirror meditation to anyone. Uh, you, you want to protect yourself beforehand first, and you have to be prepared for stuff like that happening, because if you're not, it could freak you out. <laughs> so, um, but as for myself, I, I generally welcome those kind of things to happen in my life. I, I basically tell the universe, show me something that will make my jaw drop in a really good way. So, it's still, I haven't seen anything that made my jaw drop, and I've seen a lot of things that would probably freak a lot of people out. But I'm just ready for it right now. Wow. So, I'm, I'm so glad you guys are all chatting here amongst yourselves and with each other and getting to make new connections. And that's part of what this is all about, too, is um, to make sure that you guys are, you know, getting along with everyone and hopefully friending each other and developing new friends through these kind of Facebook Live meetups. Um, I was talking to uh, Michelle Walling uh, yesterday, and her and I are going to do one when she gets back from her Euro European vacation. <laughs> I can just see her, like, on the Eiffel Tower with a beret flying off of it. I don't know, like 
that Chevy Chase <laughs> video. <laughs> anyway, yeah, her and I will we'll be doing one together and uh, talking about uh, stuff that's going on recent and energy changes and stuff like that. So, hi, Ronell from South Africa. Glad you can make it. Hello, everyone that has made it here. Um, and like I said, greetings to everyone that's watching this um, on the recorded version as well. I'm, hopefully I can figure out a way to upload this to the uh, N5D YouTube channel. But of course they won't be able to read the comments as well. But um, it's really cool that I finally figured this out. And I'm very grateful that you guys were all able to join me for this first live meetup. So I guess if, if we don't have any more questions, I'll probably end it here shortly. I'm going to sc try scrolling back a little. Uh, like I said, I know that there's so many that I missed. You know, I just get caught up into what I'm saying and talking about. And Yeah. Okay. Okay, Jamie Sundance Christian. Can anyone answer that for me? Oh gosh, I, w I wonder what the question was. <laughs> What's your question, Jamie? Oh, here it is. Any advice, oops, I keep losing it. Any advice on how to keep my vibration up? It keeps going back, I keep losing it. Where'd it go? It goes by so quickly. That's the only part I really caught. Any, any advice on how to keep my vibration up? Yeah, there's lots of things to do. I mean, no, first and foremost, what is it that makes you happy? You know, um, do those things or um, watch a great comedy. You know, laughter is such a, a positive thing. You, your vibration instantly raises. You want to also make sure that you're away from the TV at all times. Um, if there's people in the house that are watching it, you'll actually feel your vibration drop and once it's shut off, you'll feel it rise again too. Um, I have a bunch of uh, things on N5D, how to raise your vibration. Um, but mainly doing things that you really enjoy. Music is another good thing and I've often said this about music. It doesn't matter what you listen to as long as it makes you feel good. You know, it, it could have derogatory lyrics in it. I don't care. If it makes you feel good, ultimately, that's the only thing that matters. Don't listen to what anyone else says. They have to listen to ambient music or, you know, meditation music. You know, a lot of people know that I listen to hard rock, and it makes me feel great. I love it. So, you know, listen to music. That'll, that'll make you feel good. Of course, ground. You know, get out in nature as often as you can. That's probably my favorite and best way to raise my vibration. Um, so, and like I said, you can, uh, so there's gosh, dozens of ways you can do it, but those are probably the best ones. Um, and just do a little search on N5D upper right hand corner, raise your vibration and you'll find a lot of articles on that. So I guess if there's no more questions, I'm going to sign off. It's been almost an hour and it's been almost two hours since I've been trying to get this thing to work. But at least I figured it out, and uh, the next time, hopefully, um, it goes a little easier and quicker. But I just want to thank everyone for joining me, and I'm so grateful that you all made it here. And despite all my delays of finally being able to get this together, and I'm very, very grateful that you took the time out to share this with me. And I send you all love and much gratitude. Namaste, everyone.